So I have lost over 100 pounds following a ketogenic lifestyle. I reached my goal weight in August of last year of 2020 and I have been maintaining it a few pounds here or there since Christmas. I've kind of gained a few, um, but just trying to find that happy balance in order to maintain my weight. So in these videos, I share with you a lot of like my meal plans, um, my meals just in general, what I eat in a day. I share a lot of recipes as well as some new keto recipes that I find or that I like to try. So if you're interested in this video, then keep on watching. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Janet and if you're new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content and make sure that you're hitting that notification bell so that YouTube can let you know when I upload a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here and welcome back to my channel. It's in my birthday yet, yeah, cause I gotta say You're looking like a gift for me Wrapped up nice and neat, baby Get in my way now, don't be shy We'll be here dancing day and night Get in my groove now, don't be shy Cause I got this list of my favorite things You could be the part where it all begins You could be the first and the second and the third And the rest of it Baby, I will show you how you can catch my vibe And right away I so much time Looping in the blurry lights Get in my way now, don't be shy We'll be here dancing day and night Get in my groove now, don't be shy Cause I got this is of my favorite things You could be the part where it all begins You could be the first and the second and the third And the rest of it Saturday morning you guys and I am just about to have my first sip of coffee um, you guys seen the way that I made my coffee Aries. <clears throat> you guys seen the way that I made my coffee today I make it the same way every day once in a while I will uh, mix it up a little bit but for the most part I do make my coffee the same way every day and it is absolutely delicious I'm still on a hot coffee kick I do want to start making the iced coffee maybe when it gets a little bit warmer here in southern Alberta but for now um, I'm just going to stick to the warm coffee oh that's so good all right you guys I just woke up it's um a little bit after 9 30 10 o'clock and I am off today um, because of the test that I got yesterday so I will keep you guys posted when I hear back from getting my result um, they will send it via text message so I actually did two tests they did one rapid test and one 24-hour test and they said that I would get the rapid test back right away that day, which was yesterday. And I, I did get a text message. However, they had said that the test was needed to be further tested in the lab. And so I wouldn't get the result until tomorrow anyway, so which is today. 
So I should hear back today sometime and when I do I will let you guys know in this video today but I am feeling like a little bit better actually. I don't have too much of a runny nose. I still have kind of like a tickle in my throat um, that I, it doesn't seem to be a problem. Um, I still got lots of sleep. I ended up getting like 12 hours of sleep last night. <laughs> I went to bed before nine o'clock and I probably got up around nine o'clock as well too. So I'm definitely catching up on my sleep and honestly it's kind of nice to have a little bit of break from work because I do work two jobs and I work about a 45 hour week between those two jobs. So it's kind of like, you know, it kind of like a catch 22 where it kind of sucks to be off during the circumstances, but it is nice to have a break, I'll be honest. So today I'm going to be sharing with you what I eat in a day. Um, another day of eating, you guys. These guys, these videos actually, I really enjoy recording. And these videos are the ones that helped me personally when I was losing over 100 pounds. These videos are what helped me and to get different ideas on what everybody else was eating on keto and how to be successful on keto. So let's get into the video. I am going to finish my coffee. I'm going to get dressed and do something about this because I do have like, I'm, I'm still in my robe, you guys. I just woke up literally. So I'm going to sit and enjoy my coffee and let's get on with the day. In today's video, we are going to be making two meals and we are going to keep it under 20 net carbs today. So there will be a couple items that is kind of classified as like a dirty keto, um, but necessarily overall for both of the meals, it's actually going to be pretty clean keto. It just so happened that there is um, a few things that are higher in carbs. So that's why I thought that I would do a uh, net Carb. All right, you guys, we are going to get started on meal number one, and I'm just going to keep it simple, and I'm just going to have actually um, a bacon and egg sandwich, but I'm going to have it on a keto bagel. Now, I will show you guys these keto bagels that I recently got. I recently got them from Costco, and my good friend Lori, um, who we went to visit a few weeks ago, she actually gave me one. Um, to try she said she got them from Costco they were pretty good and only one net carb and so I tried it out and I made a sandwich with it last week and they were absolutely amazing so I managed to find them here at our local Costco here in Medicine Hat Alberta in Canada and they were actually on sale as well so I picked up they come in a package of two and I picked up two of those packages so I actually have four and I put them in the freezer and just take them out as I need them. So that is what I'm going to be making today with meal number one. So let's get started. All right, you guys, so we are going to get started on our sandwich, but first I just wanted to show you um, the bagel packaging. I will kind of actually show you a little bit of a close up of it more. Um, but these are the keto bagels that I had found at um, Costco. So these are the ones that you will be looking for. It's Keto 1.0 is, I think that's the brand. And they are all in bagels with sesame seeds, onions, and poppy seeds on the top. And right on the label, actually, it shows you um, what the carbs are. So as you can see, it is 14 grams of total carbs, 13 grams of fiber, which would make it one net carb all right you guys so these are um like i said it's not definitely not the cleanest keto by any means but these are really really good i wouldn't have them every day i would definitely limit those things that are kind of like dirtyish keto that don't have 100 percent clean ingredients um so let me show you a close-up of the macros and the ingredients so here are the ingredients as you can see it does have like a flour blend which is uh, flax, wheat protein, oat fiber, um, cultured wheat flour. So definitely not the cleanest by any means, but I'm allergic also to almond flour. So it's really, really hard to even make my own. Um, so this is just a good alternative and it's easy. And that's another thing that I like is just because it's easy. One bagel is eight grams of fat. 14 carbs and 13 fiber and 11 grams of protein. So like I said, it is works out to be one net carb and we are gonna make one of these for a breakfast sandwich today. So let's get started. All right, you guys, so I'm going to be making just a bacon and egg bagel sandwich. So I'm gonna use two slices of bacon. 
I usually always get this Kirkland bacon from Costco. So you can use whatever bacon you'd like. Just make sure that you're checking the macros on your bacon because sometimes bacon can even get higher in carbs. So make sure that you're checking labels when you do your grocery shopping. So I am just going to fry up this bacon and then when that is done, we are going to put actually our egg just right in this pan after the bacon is all done cooking. All right, you guys, this bacon is done. So I am just going to put that on some paper towel over here. And I'm going to cook um, two eggs and I'm gonna cook it in the same pan. If this is too much bacon grease for you, then you can um, put it in your container where you save it. But for me, I don't mind it. I feel like it gives it really, really good flavor. So I am just gonna cook up these two eggs. And I'm just gonna do them as fried eggs. And then while that is cooking as well, I'm going to put my bagel in the toaster. All right, bagel is all toasted and I'm just going to put some mayonnaise on that. I like the Hellman's. That's what I've used throughout my whole journey. So I'm gonna put that actually on both sides of my bagel. And you guys can add whatever if you just want butter or if you want maybe some hot sauce with this. Um, it's up to you what you like to use for your toppings. I just prefer um, mayo. So yeah, when I tried the bagel the first time, I actually ended up making like a sandwich out of it. I had um, ham and cheese and some lettuce and mayo and it was really, really good. So that's why I thought today I would make a breakfast sandwich with it. And I think it's gonna be just as good as well too, right? Can't go wrong with bacon and eggs. All right, so then we are just going to layer and put on our bacon and eggs, and then that'll be it. It's gonna be that easy, you guys. going to be meal number one which is a breakfast bagel sandwich with bacon two pieces of bacon and two eggs with some mayo and I also put 55 grams of raspberry on the side and this is it and it looks absolutely delicious you guys and really really easy to make as well too all right you guys meal number one is all done and it was absolutely amazing that was so good those bagels are legit you guys so what I also wanted to show you guys in this video is I bought the ingredients to make my own everything but the bagel seasoning. Yes, I did. I ran out of everything but the bagel seasoning. I, I think it was last week or a few days ago anyways. And I was going to buy some more, but it's really, really hard to find. I'm not near uh, Trader Joe's. That's where I got the last jar of that spice. And they do have it at Costco, but I wasn't stopping there in, um, within the last week. So I decided that I would just buy the ingredients and make it myself. Actually, I found a recipe online and I will link that recipe down below. So let's get started and make our own everything but the bagel seasoning, you guys. All right, you guys, so the good thing about the recipe that I found online is that you can either make three tablespoons, you can make a three quarter of a cup, or you can make three cups in this recipe. So I am going to make um, three quarters of a cup and I had bought this as well too, just from um, Canadian Tire actually here in Canada. And just make sure when you buy one that it has the spouts that are like wide enough in order 
for like the spices to come through because if you get one that is probably for salt um, a lot of these spices won't be able to come through something that small so I'm going to make three quarters of a cup and if it doesn't all fit in here then I'm just gonna put the rest in a mason jar so we are going to start by adding two tablespoons and two teaspoons of white sesame seeds so I had bought all my ingredients from Nutters here in Canada and um, they had pretty much all the ingredients actually that I needed in order to make this. So I was pretty excited. At first I actually asked um, if they had any, everything but the bagel seasoning. And then she said to me, she's like, well maybe you could make your own if you had the ingredients. So I don't know why I didn't think of that sooner to be honest, because usually stuff like that I would make myself. So I thought that I would give it a try and thought that it would be really, really good. All right, so that is the white sesame seeds. Next, we are going to do two tablespoons of the minced onion. So this is the minced onion right here. This is the kind that I got. Um, but like I said, you guys, if wherever you can find your ingredients, um, you know, maybe there's some store in the States. I'm not 100% sure, but I know here in Canada, like I said, I got all mine at Nutter's. So we are gonna use two tablespoons of the minced onion. There we go, that is done. Then we are going to do two tablespoons of the minced garlic. Two tablespoons of that. There we go. And then two tablespoons of black sesame seeds. And we are going to do four teaspoons of sea salt flakes. So they didn't have the sea salt flakes, but they did have, um, this is just regular sea salt. And it is the coarse ones. I'm just not sure. Um, I thought the coarse ones maybe would be okay. Um, I guess you guys can substitute and just use like regular salt maybe. The flakes are really, really hard to find um, here anyways in Canada. But I am going to add uh, four teaspoons of this and I don't mind actually like the coarse um, sea salt I really don't mind it at all all right so then you will need two teaspoons of the poppy seeds All right, and that is it, you guys. Can you believe that? It's actually pretty simple to make. And like I said, whatever sort of um, store that you can go and get bulk ingredients, um, that would be your best bet. And here it, it is Nutters, and like I said, in the States, um, I'm sure you'll be able to find somewhere that is, offers all the ingredients to buy separately. Maybe in the bulk section, even at your grocery store. I know for myself, like at Nutters, what they actually had for the sesame seeds, for the black and the white ones. It was actually a really, really large package, probably four times the size of this one. So I had asked the lady if she could make me up a smaller one and you know, she was really, really helpful actually. So she did up a smaller package for me because a lot of things, well, everything is pre-packaged now, um, right now under the circumstances, right? So that is it. So I am going to put this in my little container that I got. Let me use the tablespoon. That'll be a lot easier to probably put in. If you guys have a funnel, you can use that. And that is it. And I'm going to keep this. I will keep you guys posted. Um, unfortunately, today I don't have anything. Um, I could have put it with my breakfast sandwich this morning if I would have made it earlier. But um, I will keep you guys posted on how this tastes. I'm pretty excited. Hopefully it turns out. And then I can always have my everything but the bagel seasoning on hand. 
So that is it, you guys, that simple. And definitely highly recommend making your own. It's gonna be a lot cheaper. All of the ingredients that I bought here was actually under $10, you guys. And I know that the seasoning is actually really, really expensive to buy. So I feel like this is gonna be way more cost efficient as well too because that actually didn't even put a dent in all of the ingredients that I got. So I will keep you guys posted on how this tastes, but highly recommend making your own. All right, you guys, we are going to get started on meal number two. And what I'm going to make for supper is going to be a steak. And I am once again going to do it in the air fryer because I love that um, deer steak that I made in there. I think it was a couple weeks ago. I will link that video here, but it turned out absolutely amazing. The steak in the air fryer is the way to go. I do like um, steak on the barbecue, but today, unfortunately, it is pouring rain out today and has been raining all day. So I'm going to make it in my air fryer. But also, I wanted to try something new. It's not a new product that's been out for a while. It's been out for a while. Um, but it's going to be the Miracle Noodles rice. So I have heard that this actually tastes pretty good. I have never tried it. I've only tried the pasta that they have and it is fairly good. So I'm going to kind of make like a uh, rice on the side of my steak as well as some vegetables. Um, and hopefully like I'm going to drain this really, really good and I'm going to put it in a frying pan and add some seasonings to it and hopefully it'll taste good and maybe kind of resemble rice. I do like having the cauliflower rice. Um, I don't have any on hand right now and I did want to try this out. So I found it at Nutter's. Um, it was actually on clearance. So I think that's, I think it's actually maybe being discontinued because on the label on the back, it does say discontinued item, but I will give this a try with my meal. So let's get started. So I had bought a couple strip loin steaks just from Walmart. So this is what it looks like. Once in a while, I do like a beef steak. We are hunters, so we have elk and deer meat for the whole entire year until next hunting season. So we do provide meat for ourselves and our family. And we also do have chickens, like I mentioned in the last video, and they provide us with fresh eggs every day. So we're fortunate enough for that. But once in a while, I do just like an Alberta beef steak. So this is what I'm having. Actually, Jimmy has made chili for himself and for the rest of the family. I'm just not a big chili fan. Um, he does make a pretty good chili, but I am just not in the mood for chili. So I am going to make myself a steak. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly um, marinate this and just let it sit for only about like 10 minutes. And then after that, then I will put it in the air fryer. So I will show you guys what I do for my marinade, um, whether I'm doing it for a steak for 10 minutes or if I'm doing it overnight, I use the same marinade all the time. So let's do that. All right, so I don't measure all this stuff, but I will show you all the ingredients. So I use some olive oil. Um, this is the olive oil that I just bought. I usually actually get it from um, Costco, but I needed olive oil like stats, so I was at Superstore and picked it up. And then I will put some Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce in there as well. And then I also use liquid aminos. So this tastes like um, soy sauce. It just doesn't have any of like the extra calories or carbs that soy sauce does have. So this is what I use in lieu of that. Then I'm going to use my Montreal steak spice. I use this on pretty much all of like the meat products um, except for like chicken, but I use it on like all like elk and deer and even if I'm making like sauces like uh, spaghetti sauces I use this with everything it has really really good flavoring then I'm going to use some black pepper and some pink Himalayan sea salt and that is what I use you guys once in a while I will add um, some of the Italian dressing like just that you can buy the bottles and I will use that as well too it gives it a good flavor and there's not a lot of carbs in that dressing um, a little bit goes a long way but this is all I'm going to use for today and I'm just gonna put my steak in there and I'm gonna do it on both sides and then I'll just leave it for about 10 minutes and then we will put it in the air fryer so I will see you guys in the next clip 
All right, you guys, I am ready to put my steak in the air fryer. This is my new air fryer. I absolutely love it. Um, I bought it off of Amazon, and if you guys are interested in an air fryer, I always have the link down below um, in my description, but I have been loving it. I probably have had it for about a month now, and it is the best thing ever. I cook a lot of things in it, and it turns out really, really good. So another thing I like about it is the preset um, temperature and minutes. So for steak, um, for the deer steak, I actually used this button, the, the steak button, and it turned out perfectly. So I'm going to do that again, and then I will check it with a meat thermometer to let me know. I like my steak usually about like medium, medium rare. So I will check it with um, a meat thermometer, and then we will know for sure if it's done to my liking. I always encourage you guys to use a meat thermometer as well too, just to make sure that the meat is completely cooked through. Nobody wants to get sick right now. <laughs> um, so we will cook that at 400 degrees for six minutes. And while that is cooking, I'm gonna get started on the rice. What I did is I ended up just putting, I drained this, I rinsed it really, really good. And I ended up just putting it in the same pan of my bacon and eggs because I thought that would give it some flavor. I know with the pasta, um, the key is to get the flavor with the pasta, and I'm thinking it's probably going to be the same with the, this rice. Um, so we will see. I have it a little bit on medium right now just to take the moisture out of it, and then we will add some seasonings to it. And I think what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to add an egg to it as well just so we kind of have like that fried rice. So we will just finish frying this up for a little bit and then add our seasonings. Add just some black pepper. And I'm going to add some of the pink Himalayan salt. anybody has cooked this rice before, let me know down below what sort of tips you guys have. Um, like I said, this is the first time that I've cooked it, so I'm hoping that it'll somewhat turn out okay to eat. So the good thing is that it's really, really low in carbs and like zero net, um, net carbs. So I like that for a side dish, especially like cauliflower rice is good, but it is a little bit higher even for net carbs. And I'm just gonna kind of let that cook before I um, mix it up. So I'm gonna just let it cook for a little bit. That egg is all cooked. So I'm just gonna stir it all together now and just finish let it cooking. All right, I also decided that I'm going to make just some fried mushrooms to go on top of my steak. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the pan and I just have some whole mushrooms that I'm going to slice up and I will put it in here as well. All right, so we are just going to fry these until they get kind of cooked through. And I'm just gonna add some salt and pepper. That's all I'm going to add to this as well too. Just keeping it really simple for the seasonings on the mushrooms. All right, so I had pressed the button on the, my air fryer um, twice. So the one time it was at 400 degrees for six minutes. And so I did that twice because the first time when I checked the temperature, um, it was only reading like 120. And just now when I checked the temperature, it was 145, so that's about a medium rare steak. So that's how I like my steak. And you guys can cook it however you guys prefer your steak, but that's the nice thing about um, this air fryer. I love it. And it's also really easy cleanup. I usually just kind of rinse it with soap and water, and I have a scrub brush that I use with soft bristles, and it cleans up so nice and quick. That's another reason why I love that air fryer. All right, so let's put the mushrooms on the top as well too. And then let's give this a taste. I'm anxious to try the rice out, you guys. So let's give it a 10. 
All right, you guys, there is our supper. We have our steak, and then we have our miracle noodles rice with a little bit of egg and some seasoning. So let's give it a taste test. How our steak turned out as far as it being like uh, medium rare. Um, they do say for you to like let your steak rest as long as it's as it cooked. So in this case, I would let it rest like eight to 10 minutes. But oh yeah, it's perfectly done, you guys. Absolutely perfect. I'm gonna taste my steak first. So that is it there, you guys. It is done absolutely perfect. A nice like medium rare steak, just how I like it. Put a little bit of mushroom. Mm. If you guys haven't had steak in your air fryer, you need to try it. I was really surprised on how well it turned out. So, so good in the air fryer. All right, let's taste this rice. This is what it looks like, you guys. So it kind of like does have a rice consistency look to it, but let's give it a taste. First of all, I put too much pepper on that. But I don't know, I don't feel like it has kind of like the rice texture. It's a little bit like softer, which is weird because the pasta that I actually have for the Miracle Noodle is a little bit like more al dente than pasta has. But yet this Miracle, um, the rice itself kind of is a little bit more like mushier than normal rice but it's still not too too bad it's definitely um a good substitute and maybe maybe you guys have some suggestions on how to make it to taste a little bit better because i feel like it's kind of bland um i could probably put some vegetables in it or else um some of the soy sauce that i use that might make a difference as well but it is actually pretty good mm. all right guys and that is going to be meal number two all right, you guys, I wanted to let you know that I finally got my results from Alberta Healthcare. They actually sent me a text message. Um, like I said, they sent me a text message when I did my rapid test saying that it needed further testing. So I am proud to say that I am negative for the COVID-19. So that is such a good thing. So I'm happy about that. It just was, I wanted to make sure and kind of have like, um, a peace of mind because I was feeling a few of those symptoms and I wanted to get it checked out so I'm really really happy about that so that is such good news you guys so that is it for this video you guys I am all done for the day I will put my total calories and total net carbs on the screen right now so thank you so much for joining me and watching this video make sure that you hit that red subscribe button give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content and don't forget to hit that notification bell as well thanks for watching <laughs>